Welcome to Monday Thursday. We're so happy to be sharing virtually with you in this meal. We're sorry we can't be together at this time, but we rejoice at the opportunity that we have to spend time in spirit. So with that, I'm going to begin reading with Mark 14, verses 1 through 11. In only two days, the eight-day festival of unleavened bread would begin. The high priests and religion scholars were looking for a way that they could seize Jesus by stealth and kill him. They agreed that it would not be done during the feast. We don't want the crowds up in arms, they said. Jesus was at Bethany, a guest of Simon the leper. While he was eating dinner, a woman came up carrying a bottle of very expensive perfume. Opening the bottle, she poured it on his head. Some of the guests became furious among themselves. That's criminal, a sheer waste. The perfume could have been sold for well over a year's wages and handed out to the poor. They swelled up in anger, nearly bursting with indignation over her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why are you giving her a hard time? She has just done something wonderfully significant for me. You will have the poor with you every day for the rest of your lives. Whenever you feel it, you can give something for them. Not so with me. She did what she could when she could. She pre-anointed my body for burial. And you can be sure that wherever in the whole world the message is preached, that she, what she did is going to be talked about admiringly. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the cabal of the high priest determined to betray him. They couldn't believe their ears. They promised to pay him well. He started looking for just the right moment to hand him over.
The narrative that Tim just read has what's called a sandwich structure. For at the beginning of the narrative, we see the religious leaders trying to figure out a way to kill Jesus. And at the end of the narrative, we see Jesus meeting with the exact same religious leaders, and he is making a deal to betray, betray Jesus. But between those two closely related events is sandwiched a story of extravagant love and extraordinary ministry. The story takes place in the town of Bethany, which is a suburb of Jerusalem. And Jesus, as usual, is violating, you know, those conventional social norms, for he is dining at the home of a leper named Simon. During the middle of supper, an unnamed woman enters the room, and she's carrying a small alabaster jar filled with a really expensive perfume. Without a word, she breaks open this jar and pours the oil of this precious ointment over Jesus' head. Now, I imagine at that very moment, everybody takes a deep breath because this incredible fragrance fills the room. But it wasn't long before one of the guests gasped what on earth did this woman just do? We could have sold that perfume and helped the poor. And then, of course, all eyes turn to Rabbi Jesus because they're sure that Jesus is going to join in rebuking this woman for her insolence, right? And Jesus does indeed show great indignation, but not at the woman. Instead, it is directed at his disciples. With great clarity, Jesus says to them, leave her alone. She has done a beautiful thing. In fact, when she poured this perfume on my body, she anointed me for burial. I tell you the truth that wherever this gospel is preached in the entire world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. With profound respect, Jesus accepted this woman's ministry to him. Perhaps the cool ointment cascading from his head over his face and neck, maybe it was a baptism of sorts. Perhaps just once it felt good to simply receive and let someone minister to him. Perhaps to be touched, to be anointed, was a balm for his soul. And could it be that as Jesus was readying himself for what was to come, could it be that this woman's tender act of mercy brought a sense of healing to his heavy heart? Could it be that a few days later, while he was on the cross, Jesus could still smell that costly perfume that had been so lovingly poured over him. It is a good thing that this brave woman didn't accept for just the right acceptable moment, for that moment may never have come. She took a risk a risk of extravagant devotion, a risk of lavish love, so that even now, 2,000 years later, her ministry is still remembered. Indeed, her sacrifice smells as sweet now as it did then. Her story is memorable, but it does not end there. For we are called in the name of Christ to also love lavishly, and to minister with extravagance. Like the unnamed woman of Bethany, you and I are called to do what we can do. We are called to offer our loaves and fishes and let Jesus feed the multitude. You and I are called to fill the jars with water and let Christ turn the water into wine prayerfully, and with an ex 
expectation that God is certainly in our midst. May we do what we can do. And may we do it with great extravagance and lavish love.